Well, hello everyone, it is Ben Hardy here. And in today's video, we have to talk about the negative equity issue here in the US. Before we get in this video though, as always, if you're gonna save time and money the next time you purchase a car, link to my car buying guide in the description down below. And then if you see more videos just like this, then I recommend you subscribe because I post content every single day. Let's get into it. To properly talk about this whole negative equity situation, we need to discuss a few statistics. So first off, values on cars increased by like 50% over the course of the pandemic. Now they're down by over 20% at this point on a wholesale front. The next statistic is the fact that over 85% of people finance their cars and the loan term that people are taking is increasingly increasing over time. So when I sold cars from 2017 through 2019, what I saw most people do was take out a loan between 60 and 72 months. There was quite a few people that took out 84 months on the more expensive vehicles that we sold at the dealership, but you typically saw 60 to 72 months, especially 72 months. But now the stats are starting to skew more towards that 84 month loan term. So more and more people are taking out an 84 month loan on a car. So that is seven years with the loan. And then the next couple of stats is the amount of people that paid over MSRP. So in 2021, almost everyone paid over MSRP if they bought a brand new car. Yes, there was a small group that didn't, but it was it was pretty much universal. 2022, it was down quite a bit, but there were a lot of over MSRP sales made. Now, the thing that's important to note is the over MSRP sales were not on any sort of specialty vehicle. With specialty vehicles, they generally have an enthusiast base behind them, so they're always gonna sell for over MSRP no matter what the market's doing. And the, you know, wholesale values on the used front tend to support the over MSRP sales because there's just, again, when people are excited about a car, they're willing to pay a little bit more for it. But a lot of the cars that were sold for MSR, over MSRP during the pandemic were not enthusiast-based cars. They were just regular run-of-the-mill cars that are typically produced in massive numbers that massively depreciate from brand new. So now you can see that this is a recipe for disaster because we're in a market where values on cars are declining at a rate that is far greater than what we see in a normal market. More and more people are financing and they're financing for longer and they're coming off of financing for longer when they just paid way too much for a vehicle that is going to depreciate a lot because it's mass produced. There's nothing exciting about it. There's no reason for it to have solid resale because if someone wants to get that vehicle, they can get it very easily. So before we dive further into this video talking about what this is going to do to the car market in the future, I wanna talk about my experience in sales because I feel like I have a perspective that a lot of people in this car commentary world do not. And that perspective is from working at a dealership where I consistently dealt with negative equity. I sold brand new Dodges and Rams and I sold brand new Dodges and Rams before 2020. And let me tell you, that product did not necessarily have the best resale value. Now the Rams actually were pretty good, but the Dodge product, oh my goodness, abysmal. Dodge Dart, for example. I mean, if, if someone went and bought a new Dodge Dart, I mean, they were guaranteed to be buried. Dodge Journey, that was another one. I feel like the Dodge Journey probably had like the worst resale value of any brand new vehicle. The Durango, it you know, it wasn't horrible, but it, it wasn't <laughs> great. And so the point that I'm trying to make here is within my sales career, I consistently dealt with negative equity. The average consumer that I sold a car to had negative equity when they came in and traded in their vehicle. And on top of having negative equity, they typically didn't have the best credit and they also didn't have money down. Now, yes, I had customers that came in that had stellar credit and they had a lot of money down. And generally those are the people that were buying the big expensive diesel trucks, generally speaking, not all the time. I mean, you'd be surprised the amount that people will stretch to get into a pickup truck that they want. I digress. The point that I'm trying to make here is I had to navigate that as a salesperson. I had to figure out how to get these people into cars. And this experience doesn't make me as worried about the whole negative equity situation as everyone is talking about. Everyone's trying to blow this out of proportion and say that this is going to collapse the market. And I don't necessarily think that's going to happen. And so here's the deal. With most of the car deals that I did, like I said, people didn't have money, any money down and they had negative equity and it was quite a bit. Most of the customers were at least $5,000 upside down and a lot of them were closer to 10, sometimes even $20,000 upside down. And I know that that might sound absolutely ridiculous, but what you have to understand is when you buy a Dodge Journey that's like 
30 something thousand dollars and well it, it's a dodge journey and it ends up being worth like fifteen thousand dollars once you drive it off the lot then you can see how people can very quickly have quite a bit of negative equity because if they're not putting any money down you buy a thirty thousand dollar car after tax title licensing and all the other dealer things that get thrown in you're gonna owe quite a bit of money on that car like mid 30s at the lowest and sometimes up to forty thousand dollars like I, I saw some pretty crazy stuff with people coming in to trade vehicles and the thing that always surprised me is how often we were not only able to get these people approved on a vehicle, but how often these people were actually willing to take massive payments. So this is typically what would happen is we would see the amount of negative equity on that they had in the car and sometimes we just couldn't help them. And so in that case, we would just tell the person, you're gonna have to drive your car for another six months to a year, maybe two years, and then you're gonna be able to trade it in. So then I would have that conversation with that customer and I would just keep in touch with them over the next six months to the year. And then we would basically every six months, roughly appraise their vehicle, see what their payoff was and see if their situation had improved at all. And sometimes it was bad enough that it's like, you're just going to have to basically pay this thing off until you're able to get out of it. Um, but with the customers that we could help, what typically happened is we'd have to just usually put them in a slightly more expensive vehicle to quote unquote hide the negative equity. Because if you don't know, lending institutions will loan out more than the value of the vehicle, especially if it's a brand new vehicle. Some lenders will only go up to, you know, 110%, some will go up to 120%. But back then, I mean, lenders are going up to 140, sometimes even like 150% loan to value. What that means is they were loaning out 150% of what the vehicle is actually worth. So if a vehicle let's say, I'm just gonna make the math easy for myself, stickered for $10,000, they were willing to loan out $15,000 on that vehicle is pretty crazy. And so you can see that you can pretty readily hide negative equity. So if someone, let's just say, has $20,000 in negative equity on their vehicle, well, you can hide that in a, no, not a super inexpensive vehicle, but in a relatively inexpensive vehicle. Let's say that a lender is willing to go up to, you know, 140% loan to value, for example. Well, if you do the math on like a $50,000 vehicle, for example, well, 20%, right, is $10,000 you know, and then you jump up to 140%, that's $20,000. So you could, you know, hypothetically hide about $20,000 of negative equity in a $50,000 vehicle. So you could, in essence, give someone about a $70,000 loan on a $50,000 vehicle. So at this point, I know a lot of you might be asleep, but the point that I'm trying to make with this story is that Although this market where we have more and more people with negative equity is going to ultimately push some people out of the market, it's still going to be a market where people are gonna buy despite the fact that they have negative equity. Just because someone's upside down doesn't mean they can't buy a car. Lending institutions, although stricter today than when I worked in the car business, are still willing to loan out over 100% loan to value on vehicles. And so they are still willing to let people hide some negative equity in vehicles, especially if it's a brand new vehicle. And the other thing that I didn't really talk about with that story is rebates. Rebates can also help out with, you know, you quote unquote, uncovering negative equity. That's what we always used to say as we were uncovering negative equity for these customers. So let's say that we have a $50,000 vehicle and let's say that it has a $10,000 rebate on it. That's actually pretty high, but we'll just, we'll just go with it just to make the math easy for me. And let's say our customer has, you know, $20,000 in negative equity. And let's say that the invoice on this particular vehicle is $45,000. Well, a lending institution is going to look at the MSRP of that vehicle, and they're also going to look at the invoice of that vehicle. Lending institutions loan off of both of those figures. Now, they will technically say that 100% on most vehicles is MSRP. And so if a vehicle has an MSRP of $50,000, $10,000 rebate, which $10,000 in discount for that customer, and the customer has $20,000 in negative equity, and let's say that they're taking out a loan, let's just say taxes don't exist, just in this example, they're taking out a loan of $60,000, that's well in line with what most lenders will be willing to do on a vehicle. And so it basically puts that customer in a situation where they can quote unquote uncover the negative equity and they'll be able to move on. And so with this market kind of pushing more towards, you know, bigger discounts on new vehicles and frankly rebates on new vehicles, it's going to give customers more opportunity to be able to, again, uncover this negative equity, which is going to keep them in the market rather than pushing them out of the market. So to summarize, although there are going to be more and more consumers with negative equity because of how much people paid for cars over the last few years, and because of the decline in wholesale values, I don't see this putting us in a situation where people are just gonna stop buying cars because they can't. Lending institutions wanna sell loans, 
dealers want to sell cars. They're always going to work together to put car deals together. Manufacturers obviously also want to sell cars. So just expect that we're going to be in more of a normal car market. Again, the car market that I experienced where there was a lot of people with negative equity. The negative equity was uncovered with big dealer discounts and big rebates. And that's ultimately what sells cars. And so I don't think that we're going to see a market where, like I said, people just stop buying. We're just going to see higher car payments, longer loan terms, more people with negative equity. Dealers are going to have to learn to sell cars again. Like that, that's really the story of this. And so if you can learn anything from this video, it is to try to be more conservative financially, right? I understand that there are potentially a large portion of you that are in a situation where you have negative equity. I think the best thing that you can do at this point is just to try to pay off that car as soon as you can possibly manage. And the next time you purchase a car, right, don't buy into the hype, right? Wait for the right time so then you can get the best possible deal on that car so then you can minimize the amount of negative equity that you will experience. Don't be, you know, the large portion of buyers, which I'm telling you, it will be a large portion of buyers that will continue to buy cars and continue to rack up that negative equity as time goes on and continue to increase the loan terms that they have, right? 84 months right now is starting to become the norm. Don't be shocked if we start to see 96 months as the norm and then 108 months and then 120 months and then we'll get probably get to the point where it'll just be like mortgage terms with vehicles i mean it's slowly going in that direction as time progresses that's going to sum things up let me know what you guys think about this i'll see you